the, to the corporate office. Okay, thank you. Uh, when the SEA formed in the 60s, there was the board of directors and that was, that was about it. Uh, they started spinning off offices and things. Uh, this is what you're looking at right now is the 2019 current uh, flow chart of the society, uh, corporate side. Uh, if you want to look at it, uh, uh, again, two, three decades ago, the president, the secretary, and the treasurer are the three corporation officers created in the Articles of Incorporation. Uh, at one point, they were all on the board of directors. The board of directors over uh, starting in the 90s, maybe late 80s on one of, their, on one of the, uh, the secretary or the treasurer decided to spin those off of the board uh, to kind of... Uh, make sure that the uh, positions uh, were, were serviceable rather than dump everything in the hands of seven people. Uh, again, this is the current one, which is basically uh, shows who reports to who. We all report to the board of directors. Uh, you can see on the left, uh, IT, the manager of IT reports directly to the board. The executive assistant, which does minutes, and this basically does a lot of... Uh, of uh, secretarial type work for the board, yeah. uh, reports directly to the board. The crowns, by the way, go directly to the board of directors. There's no intermediary between the crowns and the board of directors. Uh, board committees are spun off. And you have my office, which it kind of looks really a little different than the, the actual uh, the way it works. It looks like they all funnel through me. That is not correct. Most of these officers report directly to the board. I'm just the, uh, the person that uh, handles problems if they, you know, if, if they crop up or if people need help, officers need help. Uh, you could see uh, right below me of in-house counsel, which is our legal uh, counselor, not the same as being a hired uh, legal rep. Vice President of Corporate Oper Operations, which is uh, Renee Signorati. All the way to the right, we have the VP of Operations, which is the Society Seneschal. And you can see all the rest of the offices flow out from that chart. That's the way it is done. Every now and then it is adjusted when the board creates a new position or a position, take a kind of recent example. The Chiurgeons was removed from this when that was discontinued as an office in the society but uh this is the this is the uh the flow chart but again uh everything goes up to uh ultimately whether it's a corporate or a society officer to report to the board of directors and i would also add commentary to this that uh, you know 98 percent and correct me if i'm wrong 98 95 percent of all the people on this org chart are volunteers yes uh Yes, and, and there are some offices that do receive a small stipend. Uh, we'll bring this up later when we talk about the communications officer, but everybody usually, unless you're an employee, start off as a volunteer, depending on the nature or the, how heavy the work is or what you do legally with the corporation. There's a small stipend, but that is minuscule compared to the number of hours, like work in a kingdom or like work in a group. Uh, most everybody does volunteer and it is a very necessary thing which a lot of people who play in the SCA really don't see or or because it is it is created to be seamless and invisible most times yeah absolutely i think i think there's a lot of misconception sometimes about about this stuff uh, and and the work that gets done and how it gets done and that that sort of thing the board of directors like everything feeds up up to us, but we cannot do anything with all of these people without all of these people. It's impossible. We simply cannot. Um, and so that is why volunteers are so incredibly important, and finding ones that are that are skilled in the areas that we need are super important. So I just I wanted to show it just because I think some people, most people, haven't seen it. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing that. And then, um, so the next piece that we are just gonna flow into are what I like to, you know, I 
I use parentheses, but requirements for volunteering. So this is kind of a discussion between Bart and John and I sort of collaboratively, but I like to throw this out there, especially because I am not a peer and I am serving on the board and I cannot tell you how many people I have met who think that you have to be a peer to serve at the society level. Tamar, I see your, I see your hand is up. Um, is it about this or was it about a previous item? Or is your hand up? Oh, just kidding. It's my hand. Don't mind me. <laughs> my apologies. He's like, what are you talking about? Anyway, so <laughs> I apologize. Uh, the Basically what I'm trying to say is people assume that you have to have accomplished a certain amount of work or, or something within the SCA. You have to have received some certain award or, or that sort of thing. But when we talk about volunteering um, on a local level, on a, on a kingdom level, uh, and at the society level, it really is about, in my opinion, the, the skills that you have and what you can bring to the table. Now, being, for instance, a marshal, a, a knight's marshal, a kingdom marshal, um, something like that, obviously you're gonna need some background in, in fighting. Do you need to be a knight? I would argue no, maybe someone would argue yes, I don't know. Uh, but um, what are some, and maybe just folks who are here today, what are some misconceptions that you've heard or that you thought yourself about what I would call the requirements for volunteering? Is, is that something that's out there for people or is it not? I can say before I got onto the board of directors, um, I can say that I heard that you needed to have some sort of business experience as a executive, or you needed to be a lawyer, or you needed to have some sort of IT experience. Some something along those three lines was was the rumor I heard. But now that I've you know been involved in the corporate level, I can see that uh, there are a lot of positions and uh, you know opportunities for people of various skill levels and you know various you know talents to come in and help and so you know there there really isn't there really isn't one specific thing there's really you know there are a lot of roles and a lot of options for people to help and and chip in at the corporate level and uh, so that's definitely one thing that that I heard was a misconception anyone else yeah just I always I always thought that you had to have a greater knowledge of the SCA and the world per se um, to be able to be an officer. You know, you're doing things for a wider group, so you would know you have to know more. Um, I'm learning a lot lately that I don't need to know more than I know. <laughs> Yeah, and I think I think to some degree you are right in that you know we want folks uh, to be aware of other t places and other things that are going on. Consider things outside of themselves, but you certainly don't need to um, have climbed the mountain yourself if if you have uh, had experience otherwise. John, it looked like yeah, it looked like you wanted to say something. Yeah, uh, so take the board. Uh, you don't have to, like, as uh, was said earlier, you don't have to be a peer. You don't have to be anything. Now, the board, because it is a modern corporate organization, does occasionally look for people to, to fill spots or slots on the board who may have different skill levels and different things, right? That is normal. But, uh, and, and anything in the SA, it, it, it is helpful, of course, to know something about the society something about how the game itself works but uh, but there's no minimum or maximum requirement and that changes uh, every six months a, a, a new board member comes on uh, six months from now a year from now there will be one or two people stepping off there will be things that the board could learn from or gain from the experience wide either in the SCA or you know outside the SCA uh, the board goes through cycles of a, but it looks like getting a lot of one thing because of a particular need that that uh, that may show up. But in the long run, if you're on the board list for three and a half years, you get interviewed 
probably at least once. And during that three and a half years, there you never know what may show up that you may be able to be the best fit. So it, on top of that, if you're a, like a board nominee or you're somebody that wants to participate as a volunteer for one of the corporate or society officers, because you may or may not get something immediately there that does give you, get your you know toe in the water, gets people to know you, get you in part of the discussion. Uh, so I've seen people become a society corporate officer who had really never worked much uh, on a kingdom level before, but an experience in something else. There's no criteria that exists that says you can't do this. But if you don't try, then you never know. But a lot of us, I, I, I suffer from this. I, I sometimes believe that what I have to offer may not be as as cool as like somebody else. But like Let anything you do in the that. kingdom. Yeah, well, it's like in anything in a kingdom, any kind of office, any kind of autocratting, you know, if you do fees, fees, crating, anything, uh, that is usually up to another group of person who determine what's needed. So don't let your believing that maybe you're not quite ready, which you may not, I, I don't know, you, or you may be super qualified, or you may fit a slot right then where we have a great need. If you go to the SEA.org and look at the officers and just arrow down the huge freaking list of things that get filled by people who do volunteer work. And I would be willing to bet that every single person, whether they are a board member or whether they're an officer of any type, started off not thinking they would get something or got something and worked your way into something else. I was never met to be associated with the corporate area of the Society for Creative Anachronism if you knew me a long, long time ago. But I kind of lucked in and uh, that can be literally anybody. And the one of the things that the society looks at when you're looking at people who volunteer is if you get one or two, that's only one or two for a possible slot. But the more you get, the more everybody gets to, to know what the system is. You may not get this one. You may get another position. You don't get what you want right now. You may get to be like if you're with the Society Seneschal. Uh, Ella Sade is here. She is the Society Seneschal. She's always looking for people to do investigations. It's a very corporate, private side, but it is a very desperately needed thing. And not as many people reach out as possible. Not We have, what, 30, 35 people on the board nominee list. That's a, that's a, could be doubled and it would only be, be good because a lot of people who may or may not get on the board move on to other things. It's like, like, again, it's like working in your group or your kingdom. You never know when you're going to be the person who gets to be the exchequer and you never thought you'd be an exchequer in your entire life. But uh, I wanted to uh, address uh, Christina's comment in our chat box here. It says, I thought you, I thought you needed to be well known. And it kind of hit on something that JBK said for me, because um, I had literally been my baronial seneschal. Uh, I had not worked really at kingdom level. I'd worked on a reign for the East Kingdom when I got, when I interviewed and then was selected to be on the board. Um, I mean, I was well known within my friends, but if you ever, <laughs> if you ever do want to consider applying for something um, and you feel like, you know, no one knows me, uh, no one knows the work that I do or how how well I do it. You can always, if you do decide to apply for something, you could also ask uh, people who do know you and know your work to send in references for you. Just an email to who, whomever is, is taking those resumes, whether it's the board or an officer position, just ask them to, to write a little recommendation for you saying, hey, like I've seen this person do all this awesome stuff. They would be fantastic for this position. Um, but you don't need to be well known to be nominated. You can nominate yourself. You can apply. And it, in the next section here, we'll go over the actual um, uh, options, what we have for volunteer positions coming up and, and that sort of thing. And I can tell Bart is like chomping at the bit over there to talk. Go right I, ahead. I don't have much to say. I, I just wanted to say uh, a good way to think about it is applying for a modern job in a corporation. In a, in a nonprofit corporation. Um, at this level, at the society level and the corporate level, um, you know, you may not have a lot of renown. 
Uh, you may not be, you know, might not have a high rank in the SCA, but uh, that's not, you know, that doesn't impact our decision making. We're looking for people with a skill set. We're going to read your resume, not necessarily your SCA resume, unless it, you know, has some uh, bearing on the job that you're applying for. But uh, we're going to be looking at your mundane resume and we're going to be looking for people with talents and skills that can be a force multiplier at the highest level for the society. So well, I appreciate that because there are some well-known names and then there are those who just work in the background, which is what I've usually done. So thank you. I hear you. I completely hear you. And I, honestly, I think the reason I was selected because I had great experience the, the, um, uh, mundanely, I used to work for the Girl Scouts. I did programming and volunteer training. I used to work in residential life and did crisis management uh, and investigations and sanctioning and, and that sort of thing. So um, I was lucky. I was really lucky to have a really good combination of, of experience mundanely as well as my SEA experience uh, to kind of pad that, which is nice. Uh, to more, my current position is a strange one, whereas I am the current keeper of the ICAC, and I don't know what that is, by the way, and that being a society level competition, have never gotten a definitive answer to where, if anything, I would fall beyond kingdom level. I'm not sure what you're asking, Tamir. Can you just talk uh, to me? All right. Well, John, John knows what it, it's the interkingdom archery competition that we hold okay. within the whole society. Okay. Yep. And I, I basically, I, I'm the one that gives the bad news, like for the last now going second season said we can't shoot. Um, <laughs> and when I took it over, well, going on three years now, um, you know, I, I, they're like, oh yeah, you're a deputy something. I forget what it was. And I was like, no, I don't think that's right. And so I was like, well, it's, I, I wasn't required to have a warrant. I mean, I'm a warranted archery marshal in the East Kingdom, well, East Kingdom, North Shield and <laughs> a few North other kingdoms. Shield. Yeah, and, and Meridiers, and you know, because I used to live in Valdosta, you know, the middle, the backwater of uh, the kingdom. Um, so I was like, I don't know where that even falls, you know, because there was never any anything given as far as a definitive where that falls. You know, I mean, I think I have, I've never even, yeah, I see where you can self volunteer for your, um, or nominate yourself for board. And I've been in, I don't know, since the early 80s. So I'm not quite as old as dirt, but I'm <laughs> getting close. <laughs> I mean, I was born in 83, so. <laughs> yeah, I was I was in before that, you know, tens um, of single digit numbers. <laughs> I think, you know, I, I think thinking less about your natural progression, you know, I think a lot of people think about the progression of things in the SCA along lines, kind of like how we look at award systems and lines like that. But I would, you know, it's great to look for opportunities within archery, but I would say look for volunteer opportunities wherever your other skills fit too. Uh, there may not be a natural next step uh, as far as where it fits, but I don't know. Does that answer your question or am I completely off base? Oh, I think or John, John wants to talk or Bart so, wants to talk. I can't tell. Bart, you first. I believe our president wants to say something. That, that was what I was going to say. <laughs> uh, I, well, I, I was going to say what you're doing is is experience within the society. It's experience, whether or not there are some people who may have different opinions of exactly where it falls. It falls within, in my opinion, uh, within the marshals area, because you are dealing with. Uh, an activity that has run through the marshal's office, but that's, that's legitimate stuff. That's good society business. That's a situation in which you deal across the SCA with a whole lot of people. Some are really nice SCA people. And every now and then you, you run into some who are difficult, but uh, from that standpoint, I, I'm not real sure why the IKC is not, does not, you know, is not recognized by the society marshal. You might want to reach out to them just as an aside and say, uh, Ray, John says to ask you to see if there's any, <laughs> any uh, not, but I, but I am serious yeah. about this because it, it has come up before. But what you do is solid stuff. You, you track records, you keep logs, you report that, you, you handle problems that's 
a high percentage of what most of us do in the SCA. It's just a different area, but it's the same type of good service that uh, that's done that uh, gives you a resume within the organization, most definitely. All right, I do want to kind of move on to our next section on our agenda, just yep. to make sure we cover the actual volunteer <laughs> opportunities um, that are available. So I'm going to just briefly cover the board section of things. Um, so I'm the new uh, recruitment uh, ombudsman for Yay. the board. Yay. Uh, so I'm working on revamping some things. It's exciting. I love I love career development and that kind of stuff. And I love job searching. So it 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 fills a niche for me, which is great. Uh, but just to give everyone the process and how that all works, uh, anyone can nominate anyone to the board. Um, you can nominate yourself to the board if you would like. Uh, there is an email address on our website on the board of directors uh, website that you can nominate uh, yourself or someone else. And you will get a lovely email from <laughs> the illustrious Leslie, uh, who is here today, which she may or may not wave to us. Um, but when you're nominated to the board, essentially what happens, you get an email asking if you would like to accept that nomination. If you accept the nomination, you send in a resume, you send in your professional and your uh, SCA resume. Uh, it gets loaded in for all the board members to read and look at. Uh, and then you go on a list for uh, three years. And you're on this nomination list. Uh, people can write in commentary for you. So that would be a great opportunity, you know, if you're newly nominated to say, uh, hey, I worked with you on this project. Would you write a nomination for me? That's totally acceptable. They can write in and, and, and give a recommendation. And that helps us inform us about, about you, your talents, and, and um, the work that you've done within the SCA or outside. That would be fine, too. Um, so during that time, we basically look at those resumes and then say, what are the, what are the needs of the board right now? You know, um, do we need someone who's super analytical? Do we need someone who is a lawyer? Do we need someone who, um, uh, has a lot of experience with youth? Do we need someone who's big into ANS? We really want to make sure that it's well-rounded. People are from multiple geographies. They're from... Um, have different backgrounds, whether they're, you know, fighter oriented or service oriented or arts and sciences or fencing, really, we're really trying to create a, a very diverse board of people so that we can have diverse opinions and so that we can come to the best conclusion at the end of the day. You know, we sit in a room for hours and during COVID it's been hours on WebEx or Zoom or whatever. Um, it's challenging. It's super hard. You have to be able to uh, express yourself appropriately and uh, be able to have conversations with folks uh, from multiple, uh, from very diverse backgrounds of their own. So it, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of pressure, as I'm sure you can imagine. Um, but we're always looking for to fill a need within our group. And every six months, someone steps off and every six months, someone steps up. So we have this constant rotating door. So we're constantly interviewing. Um, when you get on that nomination list, you may be interviewed right away. You could get an interview within two weeks, depending on what's going on and what we need. Or you might not hear, like I didn't hear, I didn't get an interview until probably two months before I was off of the list itself. Uh, at the end of three years, you're totally able to re-up being on the list. If you want to say, hey, I want to I want to stay on that list, you can raise your hand and say, I want to, I want to stay here. Um, but I would encourage you, please, 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 if you have any interest, if you know people who would be good, um, who are calm, cool, collected in a crisis, but also um, can bring bring a little something extra uh, to that to that group, uh, please send them our way. That would be fantastic. Um, so I'm gonna, that's sort of my plug for the board. Uh, I'm gonna pass it over to John to just talk about some corporate and society officer op uh, ways of volunteering. And then Bart is gonna chat about some new stuff that's coming up, but then at the end, people can ask questions about all of the different positions. So, okay. John. All right. Uh, Tamer, I sent you a private message about contacting me about what your, a little bit more about your question later. Take a look at that if you would. Uh, 
lots of stuff always come up. The uh, board about three years ago created a communications officer. Uh, it's time to uh, to take new applications for that. Uh, let's see. I'm going to put this in the chat box. Take a look at it. And I'm just going to interrupt you for a second, John, mm -hmm. because I have been uh, given some additional information and it's two years on the board nominee list uh, and not three. Oh. So thank you. Oh, I was wrong too. So, <laughs> but you can re up, but you can re up. Yes, you can re up. Uh, so uh, right now, uh, we have a corporate communications officer position coming open. Take a look at it. It's a basic, it is a new position, which has seriously become extremely important during COVID. And I imagine that a lot of offices are going to evolve out of this. Uh, communications officer works with a couple of other officers, social media, uh, just any number of my office uh, works on our message, works on our uh, uh, branding, works on making sure we have the proper uh, things ready make suggestions to all the corporate society offices on making sure we let everybody know what we're doing. Uh, but, you know, take a look at it. Like I said, it's in the box. If you know somebody or you would like to be, uh, to be uh, considered, that would be awesome. Also uh, going forward, all the positions are usually put on social media. Uh, if you check the www.sea.org, check the front page, arrow down, there are usually announcement about positions. This is a continual process. Uh, it's not going to stop as long as bureaucracy in the SCA exists, uh, because it is a it is a needed thing usually. Uh, but uh, take a look at that office. And and again, if you ever have any questions about a position, you want to know what's going on. If something's open, who would you be able? Who should you contact if you want to volunteer to? to to maybe work with something, email me at presidentsa.org and I will route you because I am a great router. Uh, will route you to the <laughs> to the proper authority to see that at the very least your question will get answered. And then if something happens, you don't get an answer, you can come back and yell at me. Uh, but we uh, definitely treasure any interest or any help we can get. Thank you. And I would also say, if you just have an interest in something, if you want to shadow someone or, or get some experience before actually volunteering, I bet John would be happy to hook you up with the appropriate officer who might be willing to maybe share some of that experience and, and do a little shadowing. Yeah, the, uh, the situation is, is, of course, going to be dramatically altered whenever we start opening up and Every single person doing stuff in the SEA is going to be doing a whole lot of stuff to try to get back to events and try to get past the pandemic. Yep. Uh, so uh, just keep that in mind that uh, hopefully, maybe this year, maybe early next year, uh, everybody will be active doing all kinds of terribly cool and fun in-person things. But our offices, like social media communications and stuff, everything we've got that's online now, and Saruka brought this up, is we want to be able to also, after this is over and we open up, to be able to have an SCA YouTube, to have everything that everybody's done as accessible as we, you know, you don't have to go to an event to be in the SCA. So uh, again, more opportunities, more stuff to do. Uh, more options for, for all of us. Thank Thanks, John. Bart, do you want to chit chat yeah. about some new opportunities that are coming down the line? Absolutely. So, but before we get to that, I just want to say uh, two things. Uh, the board of directors loves to hear from everybody. If you have an interest at corporate in corporate volunteering, that means you probably also have an interest in what's going on at the corporate level and you might have feedback. Um, comments at SCA.org. That's a great way to get in touch with us. You can email us. And a board of director, a member of the board of directors uh, will email you back. Uh, maybe not right off the bat, maybe not that day. Maybe we have some busy things going on, especially if there's just been an announcement. But we love to interact with people. We work for you. And we're trying to make the SCA a great, diverse, vibrant place for all of us. And we need feedback to help make that happen. You know, there are seven of us and we do have great officers and we do come from all over. But 
that, you know, at the end of the day, we, we still have a limited, you know, you know, group of opinions. Scope. So it's always great to hear from folks. So definitely, you know, reach out to us. Uh, the other thing, uh, Falada just uh, threw out a great uh, idea in the chat box, but I'm going to mention it. Uh, definitely sign up for announcements at sca.org. Um, you'll get an email probably, uh, you know, an hour before you'll see anything on Facebook about stuff that's coming down. So if you're an information junkie and you love policy and you love SCA policy, that's where, you know, that's where you want to get it on tap right there. That is a great, you know, email distribution uh, service that our uh, communications officer runs. So definitely sign up for that. Uh, as far as uh, future, you know, on the horizon possibilities, the board and officers are currently discussing uh, possibly creating a project management office. Does anybody know what a PMO is? A project management office is? If you, if you might have some, uh, you know. Uh, I used to be a project manager for corporate IT, business to business applications. Awesome. I'm a disabled adult now, so yeah. like, I'm like one of those volunteer types now, you know? Yeah. Okay. All right. That's awesome. So you know what I'm, what we're kind of trying to talk about uh, establishing then um, we're going to hopefully be uh, looking at, you know, we're still discussing it and finalizing it. So, you know, this is like a sneak preview um, and it might change, <laughs> but uh, it sounds like we're going to hopefully uh, set up uh, two new offices a, 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 a project man management office to create project management uh, tools and templates to help the creation of corporate level projects so that uh, we can, you know, get some horsepower and expand some new initiatives and try some new things. Um, and we're going to do that. We're going to try to do that by engaging our, our populace, by reaching out to folks and getting people who are subject matter experts or have certain talents together as a team on a project under the leadership of a project manager I know um, people who know people, man. I do. <laughs> I'm already thinking of some, uh, the dream team, basically. Yeah, that's exactly. what I like to hear. <laughs> and there are so many PMPs and there's so many SMEs and, and, and all those great things in the SCA. Um, just, you know, just begging to help out. But uh, it's difficult to manage all that. And we're very busy operationally at the board level and at the corporate level. So this is going to give us an opportunity to continue to be good at operations, but expand our abilities on, on, uh, on, on the project front, on unique new initiatives. Um, and then the other thing that we're kind of talking about maybe doing is having a volunteer resources officer and a volunteer resources uh, office within the corporate structure where we can recruit people that are like copywriters or code guys or web developers or whatever you want to call it. And uh, get those people together and have them available as resources for the corporate community and the board and these these new project uh, managers. Like and basically be able to spin up teams when you need them, right? You get it. Absolutely. You get it. You're 100% on on the on the page, and that's exactly what we're trying to do. And we we interview all these great people for the board, and maybe they're not like a perfect match right this second, but we're like, wow, that person has an incredible talent. They'd be great for this project we're discussing. But we sometimes, we sometimes, you know, have, you know, we get overwhelmed, right? Um, and so this is a, a, an expansion that we're discussing and hopefully gonna uh, make a part of our strategic planning. We're gonna build this horse, horsepower into the corporate level. And then hopefully we're gonna start building out a plan and, and have series of, series of initiatives and projects, uh, goals, and start to kind of expand the corporate level in a way uh, that helps us have a great time in the SCA, right? So um, there are lots of different projects we've discussed and that's just kind of like a little sneak preview. Please understand that um, none of that's set in stone, none of it's been voted on yet. It's just something that we're discussing. Um, and uh, if you have an interest in that, definitely keep an eye out. Hopefully, hopefully there will be an announcement and a call for applications soon for those two positions. Um, and uh, beyond that, once those positions are established, we'll be looking for subject matter, matter experts and people with project management experience. So, um, so that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today. Thanks, everybody.
Thank you, Bart. I think that I think the biggest thing here that we can all take away from this is just that we we really are a volunteer based organization. We would not function at all without volunteers. So it's so incredibly important. Anytime there's an opportunity to talk about this stuff and get people more involved, I am all about it. Uh, so when I saw this pop up in my newsfeed, I was like, I will volunteer and I will facilitate this thing. <laughs> Um, so it made me super happy, but we have, I think we have about 10 minutes left. I would love to just kind of open it up to everybody for questions, discussion, if anyone has anything they want to bring up, because we could go on and gush forever, but <laughs> no, have we given you all the information you possibly what, could need? <laughs> what a polite group of people. I mean, please, I, I think the other part of doing these types of things that I really enjoy is that people always, people who have never met a board member have this idea in their brain sometimes that the board is like this scary thing or like that they're these corporate suit people. <laughs> and I am very silly and awkward and, uh, you know, I, I, I hope that I hope that people see me as just another SCA person. I don't know. I've seen you. I've been since we started going lot, um, on the Zoom. Is it Zoom or WebEx? Doing the the board meetings. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I've loved those. Yeah. You know, because oh, I'm so it, glad. It used to be, you know, we had to wait until the minutes came out, and now we can actually, you know, I plan. I was like, oh, I got nothing to do. I'm gonna go watch the board, especially <laughs> the one a couple of months ago, which I had very much interest in. John knows what I'm talking about. Um, so it, it's actually, you know, being retired, you know, it's like gives me something to do, <laughs> you know. And I was like, yeah, this is cool. I mean, I'm kind of shy anyway, except when I'm at SAA events anyway. Um, I think that's pretty spot on for a lot of people too. Yeah. Well, that's why I, I've served on, uh, you know, royal households to help try to get past that. Um, I'm not nice. sure what barony you're in. In um, I'm in May. Endward. Oh, Endward. <laughs> Endward. You know Endward. my. You know my. You know my um, good buddy, lifetime friend, Eckhart, Master uh, Eck, and yeah, he, he's he's a laurel up there. He's up. Oh shoot, they moved from Vermont up there. Uh, but you know, like I said, they they're. they're they're building a new house. Well, uh, I shouldn't say a new house. The house is like, like from 1800s or something. <laughs> gotcha. I do see someone else is unmuted, and I apologize. I cannot oh. pronounce your name, so I just wanted. Oh no, you muted yourself it's, again. It's, it's Ellie. Ellie. A Ellie. Okay, but you didn't have something to say. I just wanted to make sure we cover. Okay, and Genev Genev. Oh, I <laughs> Exactly. You I am not a herald. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, it's Genevo. Thank you. Um, I was looking at the website. I see the communications officer, but is there any other openings that you're looking for? So always, always the board. And then I believe, I think, and John can correct me, he was about to talk, I apologize, I cut you off. No. Um, I believe the communications officer is the only position currently open at that level. Is that true? However, Ella Sate, the society seneschal is here. Do you need help on anything possibly that you could use? Like, not not putting her on the spot or anything, yeah. John. <laughs> Steve, John. I, um, her. I John did. already mentioned that 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 uh, investigators for for sanctions investigations are we. Not only do we not have very many of them, but they seem to be having attacks of life lately at a frightening rate. Uh, oh, no. so what kind of investigators? That, I'm sorry. What? What kind of investigators? Uh. Ah, okay. So there is a group of people who uh, investigate when, usually it's when a kingdom has done some sort of sanction uh, on somebody where they've, they've, they've given somebody a, typically a temporary removal from participation, or sometimes it's a complaint that a kingdom decided didn't need to be dealt with and the person appeals up to the society or sometimes it comes directly to society for some reason. There are a group of people who 
one of them is assigned to go and look into this and go and talk to the various people who were involved and write a report that eventually comes to me and then I take it to the board and the board decides ultimately what they're going to do about it. Um, so that's that's an area where yeah I could always use a few more people there. It requires being being organized, being not afraid to get hold of people, cold calling essentially, and the ability to stay very objective and and look at look at the facts of a matter and, and write a an or a decent organized report that kind of lays out what you found out. Um, that would and be somebody could con and and can keep things to themselves. <laughs> yes, that too. Confidentiality is very yeah. important. Uh, and people who would be interested in that should contact me at the at my email address, and I can steer you in the right direction. Seneschal at sca.org. Yeah, that uh, that a lot of people. I'd say a lot. I'd say a good number of people that have volunteered over the last number of years to do an investigation or two, because like Liz Ellisate said, it's it's under her office, but it's after the kingdom has done it. And we have to have a neutral uh, set of eyes. But a lot of those people have moved on to other things because they got you know a look at it. You got the rules explained. You can go back and explain things to other people. Ulrich, who just showed up, has done that before. A number Ulrich. of people. Have, and then Sorry. moved into other positions after doing that stuff. And it is it, it is a very important part. And afterwards, you can explain to everybody why we have some of our dopey rules and why we have to use some of our dopey rules uh, carefully because we're not law enforcement. We're private organization looking to decide whether or not somebody should be a member of our private organization. But it is a hugely important part and it, it can be tough to do. Okay, I'm going to... Bart really wants to talk. There is one more question in the chat that I would that question. I, I would really like to answer that question too. I have a really good idea. Do you have a really good idea? Age before beauty. Mm. Oh. oh, but I'm more beautiful. <laughs> God damn. Okay, you go. <laughs> I I I'm just really passionate about that that specific question. So Christina asked, how do we get the next generation of SCA people to see? they are important to this organization, encourage them to volunteer. It seems like we have mostly older representation here. And I can say that um, I love organize, I, I love, you know, working hard for this organization personally, but uh, not everybody in my age group does. And I think that it is a- You're not the youth, Bart. Well, I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying, I so, think she's talking about children and not like adults. That are no, young. no, no, so, no, what? actually, oh, I'm, okay. talking, I, I'm talking about uh, your age and younger kids. You're younger. at the age of okay. my oldest okay. son. I will back and, up. There we and, go. And uh, no, I'm not talking about kids at all. I am talking okay. about people who are like 20 to 35. And I get that they may have families because we raise our families in the SCA. Yep. And, I have a five-year-old, so I'll okay, let Bart I, keep going. So I, I was just going to say, my answer is pretty simple. We all need to make sure that uh, the younger or the next generation, the 20 to 30, the 20 to 35 group is having fun. We need to make sure that they're having a great time and that they feel safe and included. And you will reach a critical mass. Um, service isn't for everybody. And I think you have to fall in love with the SCA first before you give until it hurts, right? And so I think that uh, it's a, and there are some exceptions to the rule, Saruka maybe, uh, but I, I never would have, I never would have ever dreamed of serving on the board or doing a society level job or a kingdom level job or even running an event. I showed up, I wanted to, you know, fight and have a good time and all that stuff. And then I wound up winning crown and realized how hard everybody worked and saw behind the scenes. And I thought, okay, I have some skills here for my personal life. I could maybe help the SCA out, but it was only then that I, I decided to start, you know, working on behalf of the society. So uh, I think to answer that question, my answer for it is you have to reach critical mass. Not everybody is going to do that. And so rather than trying to encourage people specifically to do service, encourage a large enough group of people at, in that age range, 
to have fun, be safe and feel included. And then eventually that will give way to people, you know, as John said, uh, he didn't set out to be on the corporate level, but he's an, a corporate institution. And, <laughs> and the reason he is, is probably because he loves this game and he loves it to the point where he wants to get back to it. And I think that's how you get there. All right, we have to, we are at 550, um, so we do need to let people go to other classes. So please feel free to to move. Um, I do want to also address Christina's question. It goes till, um, uh, it goes till 10 after, currently. Oh. oh. Excellent, yay. That's news to me. Sorry, my minutes. bad. 10 yay. more minutes, yay. I would say, <laughs> oh, okay. I would say stop, I'm your moderator, Alistair. I would stop Hi, at three o'clock. Um, I would stop at three o'clock so people can move okay. to the next one. Okay, time. that's fine. My, my apologies. I thought we had to stop 10 minutes in or 10 minutes out. Um, so I would say, <laughs> I totally thought, Christina, you were talking about children and I have a completely, but, it, but I think that is really important. And I think it's something that we kind of miss out on. You know, we, we've started, the SCA started, we were kind of like this big party back in the sixties and seventies. And then everyone started to grow up and started to have children. And so the, the youth activities started, started coming out of that, which is fantastic. Um, but we haven't really grasped a really good way that can be transmitted from kingdom to kingdom um, of getting of getting youth involved. And I we've started in the East Kingdom. Uh, we have one of the awards for our youth are is the Tigers Cub. And so previously it was just an award. You know, if you were an involved youth who did stuff, it was it was pretty service oriented. Um, but uh, could also be for for Marshall stuff. Um, we also have the Gawain. Don't forget yes, that one. Yes, we do too. <laughs> but but my point is is that before it was just an award. Now they're actually, I think maybe two years now they started doing this. They're actually having meetings. Yeah. They're having order meetings, which is so cool to see. It is so cool to see a group of you know four or five-year-olds all the way up to adults who have been one of these cubs and have grown up. The kids can see the adults, what they've become since they were cubs. It's so cool. So and that create... might end up being the difference because our children grew up when there wasn't as much recognition. They also developed their own interests in their, you know, just as they got into high school. So there was other interests that we needed to support and therefore not enough time for the SCA. Yeah. Um, and they also remember packing up cars, breaking out tents, you know, and they don't, <laughs> they don't want to do that now. They want to do something less, less labor intensive. <laughs> so yeah, our kids are not, are not involved in the SCA right now. So and I, I will just, fully admit I have a five-year-old and she's been to day trip events. I have not taken her camping yet, but it's mostly because I'm a big baby and I didn't want to deal with um, diapers at a camping event. But now that she's fully off, I can I I will take her camping. Um, yes. Really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, in in Kaid, the biggest problem is not the little kids, the the five to ten or twelve year olds. It's the teenagers and the college students. Um, we had the most amazing uh, college, two colleges in, in our barony that uh, provided an enormous amount of support. But now the, now honestly, it's it's video games. They don't they don't want they don't want to come play, even though we have events on the college campuses and the kids come and watch us, but then they go back to their dorms and play video games. And both colleges are now dark which is a real shame. We haven't found anything to bring the teenagers and the young adults into active participation, unless they started as five-year-olds, in which case they've already got it in their heads that there's stuff to do. But trying, yeah. to, trying to recruit kids that age, we, uh, young adults that age, we've had I no luck. Can I say something real quick? Um, Ciaran, yeah. who is, I believe, the Seneschal for Sanagua, the Principality of Sanagua, he actually just got out of being part of a college, uh, Davis. And his group has 
like the only college group I know of that's active. Do you want to tell us how you got them to stay so active or gear up or whatever? It, none of mine. Uh, I didn't really have anything specific to do with it. It's less the college area and more just Windy Meads, the, the, the town local. Um, has had a consistent group of people that have stuck around for things. Um, a big concern though for college students is less gaming or parties or other things and more, I don't have time to do stuff. Or, how to get there. or also transportation to get to somewhere for it. Or the money. Well, the money is another big one have, too. Or when, when the colleges started getting a little shaky, um, uh, people within the barony said, we'll take you to events, we'll pay your site fees, we'll pay you to, to allow you to participate with no, with no quid pro quo. We were not requiring them to do anything, just come and see that we're mm -hmm. having fun. And if you're having fun, you know, other people may be able to pay your gate fee or may be able to drive you to an event. Um, and I mean, when I say they were active, the, all, the last two sets of Baron and Baronesses came from the colleges, not when they were in college, but those were the people that were active in the college when the colleges were active. Mm -hmm. So they're we, still playing. It's the, it's the current you know, sort of 16 to 25 year olds that are just not, we haven't found a, a hook. And it, we, we're happy to pay for site fees and transportation and and all of that but it didn't that didn't do it i it's really like this topic i just i do want to get to a question that was posed in the chat so i do apologize um kelsey posted do you think that seeing how the sausage is made <laughs> burns board members out or turns them off to the game even for or, or for a while so i've seen it both ways um, personally, I think, I think it's a, a mentality you have to kind of bring to the board and, 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 and come thinking that this, it makes it better, you know, um, seeing the sausage is made is hard for some people, but having the mentality that what you're doing is impacting people in such a great way actually empowers and invigorates me after an exhausting eight hours of a board meeting on a Zoom call. All I want to do is rush out to an SEA event or get on a call with an SEA friend because it just gets me so excited. Um, so it, it's not for everyone. It totally can burn you out and make you feel like you never want to play again. But for me, and I'm sure for most of my fellow board members, it it's um, it actually makes the SCA more dear to you and and more important. Um, so there's we have no just smell, there's no smell of the grass. There's no banners flapping in the breeze at a board meeting. Um, <laughs> it's not fun, you know. It's hard work. Um, so yeah, I, I think a little bit of burnout is expected, but um, a really important trait if you're gonna be involved at the corporate level is loving the game and knowing that what you're working on is is the smell of the grass and the flapping banners and the breeze, you know? Um, so yeah, it, should, it can be tough for sure. You should still want to go to an event at the end of the day, as hard as our meetings are and as stressful things can be. Uh, or maybe even the outraged emails you read at 10, 8, 10 p.m. at night and you're just like, I didn't do that, what you're accusing me of. <laughs> um, so, so you really do, you really do have to love the game to get involved. There's no way to make everybody happy in this, in this job for the board because no matter what you do, there's going to be a certain percentage of people because you mess with the game that you're going to hack them off, right? And uh, that's just the way it is. You can only do what's best. And it, it is hard, as these two board members have said, because, you know, you're holding this very valuable thing. And if you screw it up, uh, you, you just simply can't. You, you can't. So on the other hand, uh, everybody has a right to tell the board when you think they're uh, doing good or if they're not doing good. But keep in mind that it's, it's like anybody who does volunteer work in the SCA that patting people on the back when they do good is as important as being criticism, as bringing criticism. It really is. 
All right, don't want to cut you off, JBK, but we are nope, wrapped up. We are at six o'clock, so I'm happy to hang out for a few minutes if anyone wants to chat, but go to your other sessions. Thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you for coming. If we have a session in the